Okay, so now we're going to be talking about electron counting and oxidation states in the context of these metal reactions. Now again, you'll never have to know the actual mechanism of anything from chapter or special topic G, but <clears throat> you will have to do some simple math. So I'm looking at this ruthenium, and I see it's bound to a bunch of things. Three PPH3s, a hydrogen, and a carbon with a C double bond O. Now, the first thing we want to do is calculate its oxidation state. In general, metals, when you think of sodium, Na, you always know it's positive one. We see NaCl, we know it's sodium positive one, chlorine minus one. Metals like that only have one charge that they're typically associated with. But ruthenium and most of the metals from this chapter, palladium, rhod uh, rhodium, they're transition metals, which means they can have multiple different charges associated with them at their base state. And that is called their oxidation state, the, net, the charge that they are found in when they are unassociated with anything. And so our questions will be sometimes about, what is that oxidation state? The way you calculate that is you look at the ligands attached to your ruthenium, or your metal, whatever metal it may be, and then you go to this chart. This chart is from your textbook, and it's a bit longer, but for our purposes, we're only looking at the first half right now. And this is all it is in the textbook for the most part. And you're going to see that these ligands are associated with a negative charge, hydrogen, carbon, and halogens. When they dissociate from a metal, they come off negative. Okay? Now, if we look at this metal as we have it right now, there is no charge on it. It is neutral, which means if this hydrogen comes off negative, and this carbon comes off negative, well, that's a total of two negative charges, right? A minus two charge. And that was associated with the metal that when they were associated, the whole atom, or the whole compound rather, was neutral. That means the ruthenium must have had an oxidation state of plus two. Because that plus two counterbalances the minus two from these two ligands. Okay? That's the way you calculate oxidation state. Why did I erase that? And so, for example, let's say I added in, another, added in another chlorine. Well, chlorine is another negatively contributing ligand. So in this example, I'll, by adding that chlorine, I have made the oxidation state go from, minus, or from plus 2 to plus 3. Because these three things each contribute one negative charge. So minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. And if the metal started off net neutral, that means this must have been plus 3 to counterbalance the minus three total, okay? So what you can do, what you can say is the net charge of your metal is equal to the total charge of your ligand, so your ligand charge, plus the oxidation state. I might be cutting this off, hold on. Um, so the net charge of your metal is equal to the total ligand charge plus oxidation state. If we use that formula for this example I gave you here, we had a net charge of zero. We had a negative three total ligand charge, because chlorine, H, and carbon each give one minus. And then that's plus the oxidation state, which based on this must equal three. Okay, So nothing too, com nothing too crazy with math. Now a couple points to, point out, uh, to make is the, more, the other common ligands you're going to see are C triple bond O, carbon monoxide, PPH3, and sometimes benzene. And these guys do not contribute a charge. We'll, get, we'll explain why with benzene in a minute, but these all contribute no charge. They have no effect on the oxidation state. What they do affect is the total number of electrons in the valence shell of the metal. So that's the next thing we have to talk about. How do we calculate total valence electrons of a given metal? So let's stick with what we drew here. Chlorine, actually let's, let's erase that chlorine. Let's go back to where it's just the hydrogen and the carbonyl, because I want my numbers to work nicely. Okay, so the first thing you do is you look at the metal that all the ligands are attached to. I have ruthenium here. You take that and you look at your periodic table and you look at which column that metal falls into. 
The most common ones you're going to be working with are ruthenium, rhodium, and palladium, and respectively they are columns 8, 9, and 10. There are other metals and you have a periodic table on your cover sheet, so you should be fine. Now ruthenium, more specifically like we said, was a in the 8th column, so I'm going to start with that. I have 8 valence electrons right from the get-go because the column number corresponds to the valence electrons of, a given metal, of the given metals. Okay? But this number does not take into consideration the oxidation state. So you must think, well, the oxidation state is a positive number, and positive charges mean a lack of electrons. So whatever the oxidation state is, you are going to subtract that from the starting valence electrons. Now based on this, we have one hydrogen and one carbon, which contribute a negative two charge. If this molecule is currently neutral, but has two negatives associated with it, the metal must have been plus two. But because that's plus positive two, that means you have two fewer electrons, so minus two in your calculation. Finally, now you must add the total number of electrons donated by the ligands. And again, we come back to this chart. PPH3 donates two electrons. Hydrogen and carbon also donate two electrons. So I have, from each of these bonds, two electrons. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So I'm adding ten to this number. Eight minus two is six. Plus ten is sixteen. I know math, I promise. <laughs> All right. So the total valence electrons of this molecule as I drew it is 16. Okay? Now, um, the weird one I want to talk about is benzene. And there are a couple others that contribute more than two, but benzene is the most common one you're going to deal with. And why is that the case? Well, let's just draw out ruthenium again. It turns out when you have benzene, it's not the carbons that are connected to the metal, it's actually kind of just floating in the space around it. That ruthenium is making a bond to kind of the center of the benzene, like the middle of the ring, because the pi bonds of each member of this ring are kind of associating with that metal. Now, the technicalities of this I don't really care if you know or not. Just know that because of this, benzene does not contribute a negative charge. It gives you plus zero, so it won't affect the oxidation state, but it gives a total of six electrons because each of its double bonds will contribute two electrons. They're all kind of at the same time influencing the metal. So if I look at this and ask what is the valence electron count for this structure, it would be six plus eight, because it's column eight, and then the oxidation state of this would be zero, so minus zero, so I have a 14 total valence electrons. Now one thing I can say with great confidence is the fact that if you ever calculate a number greater than 18, you have made a mistake. You should never have a valence electron count greater than 18. I don't have a minimum number, but I assume it would be nothing ever less than the column number you start with. Um, but that's the general gist of electron counting and oxidation states. There are two other question types you can expect about electron counting and oxidation state counting. And they're kind of just building on what we just talked about. First of all, what if they give you a metal with a net charge? So the way they usually write that is something like this. They give you brackets and then a plus one charge on it. Well, the way you calculate this is still the same as what we were doing before. We said that net charge, so plus one, is equal to the total charges of the associated ligands. So we have an H and a Cl, so minus one, and then a second one, so minus two. So negative two plus oxidation state. So based on this, what must the oxidation state be? The oxidation state must be plus three. So that's another way they can ask you about an oxidation state. They give you a metal with a starting charge, but it's just more algebra. The other question they can ask you about is they give you some compound written out. So let's say we have ruthenium, parentheses Cl, parentheses COX. And they say, what does this X have to equal if you want a total valence electron count of 16? So 
Let's start by saying, well, we want a total of 16, and we know we get this total valence electron count by three things. The column we're in, ruthenium is always associated with an 8, so we start with 8, and then we're subtracting our oxidation state from this. Well, if we look at our chart, C triple bond O, carbon monoxide, does not contribute a charge. So only Cl contributes a charge, a minus 2 charge, because there are two of them. And so we have an oxidation state of plus 2, but remember oxidation state means you're missing electrons, so you're subtracting 2. And now we need, so we have, we need this to equal 16, we have the columns electrons, we have the loss of electrons from our oxidation state, and the remainder of our electrons must come from the ligands associated. We already have two ligands on from the Cl, so that's four. But now we need however many x is of CO. So we'll have plus x. So let's just number, uh, let's balance out these numbers. We have six plus four is 10. So we have six electrons being equal to x. Now we see that for x, it, x is supposed to correspond to the total number of carbon monoxides. And so each carbon monoxide contributes two. So for x to equal six, we know that each x gives two, or each CO gives two. So we divide six by two, and we get x is equal to three. And we can double check this. This x should be equal to three. Why? Let's actually draw it out. We have Ru. We have two chlorines, and we have three C triple bond O's. CO, CO. Okay? Now, each chlorine contributes two, or each of these bonds are all worth two electrons. I kind of erased the chart, but you rewind the video a little to see that. So I have two, four, six, eight, ten from the ligands associated. I have minus two because I have an oxidation state of plus two because I have two that each contribute a negative one to a neutral molecule. So I have um, minus two plus 10, and then ruthenium being in column eight, so I have eight. Now if I do this, eight minus two is six, plus 10 is 16, and there's our answer, it checks. So this is the other way they can ask you a weird question. Fill in the blank, of whatever this number has to be, such that you have this given total number of electrons. It's just another way of asking the same question. Thank <clears throat> you.